Hello again, it's Brendan, and we're drawing some human bodies today to see uh, what human bodies look like on a piece of paper. And that's it. So um, I'm going to start off with uh, a head here. And what we want to do first is get a. I'm going to do a regular just stand up body, standing up in a standing position with legs straight and all that and what you want to do first is make sure you have the right head to height ratio and what that means is uh, basically a human body and I'm sure this isn't true for all cases but generally speaking it should stand at about um, eight heads high so if this is one head here I gotta make eight, eight more heads and in order to demonstrate that I was just going to uh, go ahead and copy and paste eight heads so that was one two and then I'll go three and I'll do it again for four okay let me get this where it belongs now and actually if you want to get really scientific about it which I don't I think there's uh, there's the eight heads there's his head his or her head then there's a little neck space and then there's the other seven heads but I'm not going to nitpick about things like this. So what I can do here, quick trick, I'm going to hide the background, say merge all layers, merge all visible layers into one. Then I'll bring that back, okay. And then I'm going to copy and paste these foreheads, not to be confused with forehead, I mean one, two, three, four heads, not the forehead. So there should be eight heads. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. And merge this one down. And that's about that. Yeah. Okay. So now um, this is where the top head is. I'm just going to turn the opacity down on this one. That that'll give me a general idea of how tall the uh, the skeleton should be. And uh, another rule of thumb is one, two, three, four. This line here get my brush this uh, the center only three four that's where the uh, the middle of the body should be the bending point as they call it and if you go read on that read up on that there was some argument in history whether uh, you know what's his name uh, Michelangelo or um, or uh, da Vinci was correct about the exact uh, bending point okay and so actually before I start drawing like that what I want to do first is uh, there's a reason this layer is called skeleton I'm actually going to try and draw not an actual skeleton by far because um, I just don't have time of the day for that it's not my thing but I'm going to do a very rough skeleton let's say for example this line was the spine because what we're trying to do is we're trying to get away from uh, the things we learned in school such as this is a man you know um, maybe if you get more advanced and you start thinking about it you don't need the teacher's assistance to realize you know something like uh, you might start off with a neck and a body and you actually have shoulders right, like this your hands come down further now here would be a waist there's some knees okay so this would be a, a better startup of uh, of a man as opposed to the uh, the traditional stick figure is something like that and that looks kind of ridiculous so trying to get as realistic as we can the best way to start learning to draw the human form is to understand that it's based on a skeleton and um, that's where you know all the bending points happen all your bones this and that so you have a rib cage in here and remembering this is the bending point so I'm not gonna get all Michelangelo or uh, da Vinci on you I'm just going to say I know there's uh, some hip bones in here. It looks something like that. And I know that if this is the, the lungs in this area, the rib cage is going to be a little bit bigger than that. You can just kind of eyeball it. The rib cage actually does make kind of a circular form. And then in here, you know, the ribs will still come out here. This is this area here is where the, uh, the six-pack, the stomach muscles will be. And we can go down from here to here again without being too nitpicky I do believe the uh, the kneecaps just come about midway I'm, I'm not sure it, if there's uh, something more precise than that maybe 
the upper thigh is, is actually slightly longer than the lower leg. I, I'm not 100% sure. But uh, for uh, all intents and purposes. And now this, I keep looking this up and trying to find the best way to get this done is how long do the arms do, go down? Well, everybody says, you know, just put your stand up and put your hand at your waist and basically you'll get a, a general feeling for it. But is that right? I mean, do the, the fingertips, do they stop here or do they stop up here? Let's say, for example, here's the, the hip, so that's where, you know, the waist is. But does that look right if his hand just stops there? No, it's too short. Likewise, if we were to put it down here, now his hand looks, uh, it's actually a little long because it's extending uh, far beyond his crotch, which would be kind of weird. <clears throat> so what I use as a judge, and this is kind of weird, I guess, but it, it just works as a good guide, because this, um, I mean, your waist is, uh, your hips or your waist or the side of your leg, it's kind of an ambiguous area from here to there. So to be more specific, I think about the uh, the crotch area is a good place to judge at. And so, and this is, you know, for scientific purposes here, not not because I'm a perv or anything, but basically you want it to come down to, to right about there. This is where the bottom of, I don't know, your butt or something is, like, uh, then it should come down, to your, your fingertips of your hands extended should come down to about there. And that tends to work for me, at least, uh, you know, visibly well enough. So there you have a uh, base skeleton and this is not something you'd have to do for every every drawing that you do of a person. You know, you don't have to make a skeleton every time then draw over it. But have an understanding of this, draw a couple skeletons and actually, you know, get an anatomy book out and uh, and really break it down, get to know where some of the bones are. And that way when you actually go to draw a person, you can have that foundation uh, in your head. So I don't need this um, the six heads anymore. I have the skeleton. I'm going to use that as a uh, base layer to draw a person over. And I think we're okay with the brush and everything. So start off with the head. And now uh, we already know a lot of this. If you want to watch my previous videos, they have the uh, how to draw dynamic heads and all that. <coughs> not going to go into detail and of course when you draw on the whole body <coughs> on a uh, a smaller scale like this it becomes harder to uh, to get into so much detail his neck probably could have been longer I can tell that now because um, otherwise where would this meat go so his neck should probably come down to here with the uh, the skeleton and uh, so I'm just going to ignore that and do what I know is correct and that is to have some muscle here around this area his pectoral muscles which come up like this and the shoulder muscles usually come up like this you get sort of a a winged look to it so I come down a little further I can just tell because I know here we're gonna have the uh, six-pack abdomen kind of thing going on and that should lead all the way down to the crotch what happens here with um, <coughs> with a six-pack is it kinda makes a shape like this it looks like um, a rounded rectangle at the top and then it, it kind of stems straight down into the bottom uh, like that because here there's a big sheet of muscle that goes all the way down to uh, to that area there and I'm not even sure exactly how it goes here because I don't spend so much time drawing naked people I'm gonna end up putting clothes on them anyway so usually just you know getting understanding that it, it tapers off down that way as the legs come around here is usually good enough then back to the brush some muscles come out here and there and again this stuff is all uh, you know important and relevant you should go and check out some anatomy books and see how the muscles work together and where they fall into place it's doing very very rough sketching and I might ignore the skeleton I drew in some cases here elbow is supposed to be there in order to make sure that it looks correct because the skeleton is not 100% correct. Now to get a hand for a calm standing position usually do one of these. The hand is like way too big for his head such as are his arms and everything. Let me see. Make it a little smaller. It'll curl up like this. <clears throat> what I'll do is make his head 
a little bigger maybe you can just tell that's not right and yeah I'll figure that out later part of the reason he's coming out so big is because I'm using a much thicker brush that I didn't realize uh, exactly how thick this was when I started with it arms definitely going to the wrong place here so let me erase some of this this one looks okay this one is not you can just tell should be bending the bending point of the arm should be about there so I'll bring that down some muscle tone here yeah and again the fingers just kind of curl up when they're in a resting position and then you can usually see the other fingers popping up behind there and since I'm using such a thick brush I'll just uh, you know just fill it in with black space for now I'm not going to actually draw his private parts put a bulge there it is important to remember that bulge is there for um, artistic purposes and if you want to be a perv in your own drawing and go into detail that's fine with me completely unnecessary unless you're drawing pornography I guess I hear they do a lot of that in Japan let's see yeah, this here the foot now for the foot um, usually when you're drawing a standing person you have a foot here and uh, it's definitely going to have foreshortening I mean imagine if you draw this would be another like kind of beginner's mistake if you draw a foot and you think oh a foot looks like that but actually feet don't normally you know stand out perfectly to the side like that they're sort of coming towards you since they're coming towards you you're not going to see all of it that's what we call foreshortening but they do point out a little bit they point, you know, in this, the left foot will point out to the left and the right one points out to the left. And so what I do here is I usually come to the stopping point where I know it's the bottom of the foot, just come down a little bit and then go over and, and wrap back around just like that. And you get what looks like a, uh, a foreshortened, foreshortened foot. That's how you say it. Foreshortened foot. Could be a bit of a tongue twister. Okay. So there's two muscles here, a kneecap. Some people do actually have really defined kneecaps, and a lot of people you would just see kind of a bump because you know it's covered with skin. But some people, I guess, if their their muscle tone is defined or they're if they're slim, then uh, you would see that pop out. Here is muscles look a little. Uh, this is a, like a Popeye arm. What you want to see in the beginning here is just bone, really and then the muscle should be up on the top part of the arm <coughs> so this is wrong the, on the forearm right after right after the wrist as you go up the arm it should be pretty much just bone in that area and then if they have any muscle tone at all it'll be up on the uh, this higher part right here yeah. and this just cleaning up again here with the wrist get skinny especially if you're looking from the side like here you know, he's got the side view of the wrist. Actually, this one should be too. So when you get the side view like that, it should be way, way skinnier. Something like that. Okay. It's not too bad. It's a little cleanup work. And so there you can tell, I mean, it's not like... Uh, you know, we're not doing the Mona Lisa, any Donatello or, or Raphael or anything here. It's just a quick rough sketch of what your standard human body would be, starting with uh, the skeleton, which started with uh, eight heads. So we had, you know, eight heads high with the... Uh, and so the in the ending result, you see the... Uh, it can be a little bigger, a little smaller, but basically the ending result the head on the ending resulting body should be just like that it's about the same size as the original you know eight heads one of those eight heads at least like that and uh, so we went from that and we got into the skeleton remembering that the bending point of the body which is I'm not sure exactly it's it's arguable you know so about where the hips are but if you're doing just like I mean in my opinion if you're not trying to make a masterpiece or anything just uh, you know let it slide it's in that general area that's good enough 
and then we end up with the, uh, a half decent body and then just to give it some uh, shading for no reason the reason I guess would be uh, so I can see the form of the body let's say the lights on the uh, the right side here and so the muscles be popping out over here this is a little exaggerated the uh, this black line here but I'm just going to leave it there for the moment so this whole side should be covered with cast shadow here a little bit of shadow in there okay inside underneath here Okay, shadow from the arm, back side of the knee, and here you have, uh, should be kind of a, a straight line right here, because that, let me turn this down a little bit, because right here you have the shin bone coming down, so you should have kind of a straight one of these, just like that. And you could even do a little cast shadow right here, since it's so obvious that the light's coming from a particular direction. There you have a quick and dirty human form. Now let's take this one and we can also put some clothes on. <clears throat> Not everybody likes to walk around naked. This guy is just walking around buck naked like he owns the world or something. Which one is that? Ah, this one. Okay. I'm going to turn this down. Now we can put some clothes on them. And for clothes, it's no big deal. I never really felt too much struggle with it. Um, the the biggest problem with, uh, I mean, let, let's use the most amateurish ideas. We're going to do t-shirt and jeans. Okay. So of course, here's the sleeves on a t-shirt, right? And most people maybe they do something like this. Just draw it around there. It goes here. I mean, most people know the sleeves will go up a little bit into the armpits, something like that. So that's you know your basic amateurish, and there's nothing wrong with that. Just kind of uh, a basic form of a of a t-shirt. But what you really want to do, get a little bit more uh, advanced, maybe up into the intermediate level, is consider where how the body or how the clothing falls onto the body and the gravity is pulling it down. That's one of the most important things to understand. So if his body is right here and how thick is a t shirt really? Is it you know, is it so thick it's gonna be floating up here? Well no. It's gonna be falling right alongside of his body until we get to the point where it ends. Right? And there's gotta be some room in there for flexibility for him to fit into the shirt. So that's basically one of the most major tips with uh drawing and right here see it'll fall against here and on the inside it might you know fall out a little bit so where the space from where his arm begins and here there's going to be you know a little difference in there and that's where you can see the the difference between the actual shirt and the body itself just like that and then again here now his body goes like this but it depends is the shirt and this is up to you. Is the shirt really tight? Is it clinging to his body? Or if it's uh, just slightly baggy, then what would happen here? It'll fall down. It's not going to, it's going to leave some space in there. It'll fall down, come to about where, you know, depending on how long it is. Some people have long baggy shirts and other people might tuck their shirts in. In this case, we're just going to assume it's, uh, it's, you know, hanging out, not tucked in. And now we're going to do a little bit of form with the, uh, with the uh, pen here, the brush, just to show that um, it is resting on his body. What will actually happen is it will fall down here because as the shirt rests upon his chest here, it's going to leave some, uh, how to say, the, the shirt's going to kind of like dangle down this way. But I'm not going to actually draw that with this thick blackness. I'm going to just leave a little bit of suggestion of that there. and. I actually don't even want to draw anything with this here. 
I'll just have a couple of faint lines there, suggestions that something's going on. And I'll come in later with the shading with a uh, you know, light gray. As his thumb comes down, now the top part of the hand, and this is not drawn very well, top part of the hand is a little thicker and it comes down into you know the fingers. And then we have the other fingers back there. That might be too big. Also you want to put your hand up to your face sometimes and just remind yourself when you're drawing the hands that there's uh, there's a relation in size there and that's really what it's all about is making relations when you're drawing the body you just want to say notice how we started off with with these um, skeletons I mean we could have drawn him bigger we could have drawn him smaller but it's the relation of the size of this to that that makes everything look right so for example if I were to draw a head this big and then have his body really small like this well that's obviously not not very realistic and then what if his hands are like you know this big here his giant hands and this is well if you can even make out what I'm drawing here you get the idea I'm just saying it's the relation of the sizes from here to there so I have to compare if his head is about this big then his hand should be you know put your own hand up to your face and get an idea for it. Your hand's usually about uh, the size of your face. It You cannot wrap your hand around your own head like, you know, like a basketball star grips a, uh, a basketball, right? Or you, you can't, you can't grab your head like you would an orange where you can put your hand all the way around it and just, you know, or like a baseball or something. Just need a nose to come down. I, I just changed his the length of his chin to about there. It looks a little more human that way. And now he still <laughs> now he looks like he's naked with a t-shirt. So we're gonna put some pants on him. Pants line, as we all know, should come up to about here. So that means the t-shirt when it fell down it probably fell onto the pants and you could even suggest that here. And he'd have a zipper line that comes here. <coughs> and uh actually a zipper should probably go down in there. It would be normal to have the pants go back because there's depth there around to the other side of his body. So it's going to come kind of down like this. We can put some pockets there while we're at it. And same as with the t-shirt, there's going to be gravity involved here. And the pants have a certain width to them, right? So as his leg pulls the pants over this way, this might get pulled in a little bit, but again, it's not going to cling his body like that, unless he's wearing spandex, of course, in which case it, it would actually do that, but we're not going for the spandex today. And we'll bring it just right about there. Do the same thing over here. Try and imagine that there's a certain width to the pants and let it come down accordingly with that width. A little tracing around the... Uh, now if you're drawing a shoe, of course, you got to leave room for the foot to fit in there. And generally shoes, the material of shoes is actually a bit thicker than like a t-shirt. It has padding and everything in it. And on the bottom, you would have some kind of sole or something like this. So those almost look like boots. In fact, it made his feet too big. Might even do this. Let's go like that. Try and bring it in a little bit. How's that good enough? <coughs> okay. So now we have a clothed guy. And um, not too bad. His hands, you know, his arms, body, this and that. And it's kind of nice how the, uh, see this drawing here, it actually made really good shading. Whereas at first he looked like a naked man, but now having that underneath, it actually kind of makes a good uh, a shading, a start for a shade layer because it shows where all of this and that muscle is. And can I, yeah, I can still draw in there. And I can still use that layer, add some more shade. Because uh, if he's just wearing a t-shirt, and if he actually does have this much um, how do you call it, muscle tone, then it's actually true that he his muscles would show out like that. But some places would not show out, and that's what I was talking about earlier. This is going to fall down. He's going to have some, like, uh, you know, some some wrinkles, some waves that in the in the fabric of the shirt that will uh, just make the shirt fall down. 
as such. It would be something like, let me see if I can draw something like this, right? Something like this, and it would kind of like taper off coming down from his body. But in this case, he's not wearing that baggy of a shirt, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave it like that. Shading underneath the shirt because there's a space from the shirt to the arm, so you can put some shade in there. Get rid of this stuff. Okay. Where was I? Right here. Yep. That'll work. And now you can come into where the kneecap is. Show that coming in there. And. Okay. There we go. That's about it. Yeah, now you have a clothed guy. And always do this, especially when you're doing something with a human body where you gotta show proportions. Definitely, you wanna flip it and see if you made any symmetry errors, which uh, I didn't do too bad this time. His head's a little tilted, but I'm fine with that because people do tilt their heads sometimes. It's not so abnormal. Don't really need those knee lines so much. This is okay. Yeah, not too bad. Obviously, it's very rough, and I could, uh, you know, clean up the work, do some better, smoother pencil lines. I do kind of want to just get rid of some of this, uh, call it stringy, veiny lines. It's not really necessary. That's just how I sketch. Some people don't like it. They think you should draw, you know, one perfect line at a time. And I tell them that's uh, good for them. And they can continue to do what they do while I continue to do what I do. Because that's just how it is. We all have our own ways of achieving different goals. And if I try to do what somebody else does, then uh, I'll just be a failure my whole life instead of trying to do what I do because you can never be someone else. We all have different ways of, you know, our bodies work in different ways, our minds work in different ways, so you just have to be yourself and use your own way. That's it. I'm going to leave that at that. And I'm going to leave this video right here, or I might add another one onto this where I'm basically going to do the same thing. I'm even going to use the same uh, uh, the starting point, and I'm going to make a female. And we'll see what some of the differences are with that against the uh, the male anatomy. And we'll see you soon. Okay. And so now let's get into the female form, which is going to be more female. So if you're here, let me take off that smooth stroke. Let me see if I can do a silhouette real quick. Because we were saying last time, um, let's see if I can eyeball it. If this is one head two, three, four, five, six. Uh, that should pretty much be the whole page right there. So if we had, I'm going to use this big thick brush. Her shoulders, mind you it is a she. Her shoulders will not be broad. It's usually men that have broad shoulders. And a lot of this stuff, um, I mean some people can even get angry about this stuff, which is ridiculous. To say something like, you know, men are like this and women are like that people get all, you know, they have groups of certain types of people who just don't like to hear that kind of stuff. And uh, they think it's separatist or something. But actually, it's a natural phenomenon, whether you believe in uh, science or religion or whatever. It's just a universal fact that, um, you know, girls and guys have uh, different types of features about them. It has to do with, uh, well, for me, scientifically, I think it has to do with uh, the way that um, what were they? There are certain types of chemicals. Uh, I'm not a scientist, so but I do believe these things. Um, when you're born, what they call it? Chromosomes, is it? The, not the genes, but the way that um, testosterone will come into a male body. Yeah, it's an X and Y chromosome, I believe it's called. So, trying to do a female here. We're gonna have the waist come in a little. There's no breasts. Well, I mean, you can't see the breast through the silhouette. They would be there. And then the hips should come out. If we can imagine, 
this is where it should come in here her hips will come out a little bit more and um, stereotypically again it doesn't have to be we could have stuff like long hair this looks very masculine still a reason for that might be that the shoulders are not um, looking feminine enough definitely looks like uh, she's ready to box if you know what I mean she's she's in a fighting position there this come down she's gonna be skinnier see as soon as you start making it skinnier it, it looks totally feminine so again uh, you know you can get angry and call your protest groups if you want but the eyes don't lie it's uh, stereotypical and you can have strong females you know I'm not saying like it has to be this way or that way you can have a big strong you know the female who's stronger than a man I'm not trying to make any argument no such argument was intended I'm merely saying that uh, stereotypically speaking for the uh, the public at large we would have a uh, a thinner frame on the upper body and a, a stronger frame on the lower body. This is, uh, I guess, because the female body would normally be have uh, their strength in the uh, the lower uh, lower body, whereas uh, men would have the uh, masculine V, so they'd have stronger upper body, stronger upper body strength. So that was just, you know, well, what is that? That's not even a, a drawing, not even a sketch, just a weird experiment. I'm curious if when I eyeballed it like that, if this was one, two, three, if I eyeballed the uh, the right amount of height. One, two, three, four, five, a little bit stronger. Five, six, seven, eight. It's a little, little short. Actually, it's a lot short because the bottom of her foot would be here. So yeah, but that's, I mean, it's okay. For me, somewhere between here and there is uh, is okay. At least it's good enough for me. Okay. So, you get kind of a female form there. The, the waist's a little bit bigger and, you know, shorter up here. And you can tell just with those, uh, you know, even with a silhouette, you have uh, those types of features that come out. So let's go ahead and make another layer get rid of this one. Let's go back to the old technique that I was using last time and I definitely want to get a lot smaller. Actually this time I might even go down to two pixels for drawing. Yeah, I'm a lot more comfortable with that. And uh, do the usual thing. Do a head. No difference in this. Not, <clears throat> not for the purpose of the whole body. If we were to zoom in, <clears throat> and as you can see here this is uh, I could have made the canvas a little bit bigger but uh, another I think I covered this in earlier videos normally a, a girl's neck would be thinner they're just not as muscular and then uh, these things would happen okay but what I want to do is get one of these and do one do the same thing I did last time basically just get one of these go copy paste and with this software I think I do have to go paste 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 like this one two three in addition to the one I had but this one here this one here this one here it's four like this and there we go okay and then I'll copy this one it's the wrong buttons okay sorry for that wait there okay so now we have eight heads <clears throat> and it's not something you have to do every time like you saw last time with this uh, quick silhouette silhouette here I uh, you know after you do it for a while you can just kind of whip it up but if you're just starting off at drawing this might be useful to have, as a as a kind of a guideline one two three four five six seven eight right I just merge that down into one layer and turn that down a bit so again we'll start off with a skeleton just to see how things work out so here I'll have um, the original head height it's about that big and I'm going super rough I have the uh, you know make make pretend it's a skeleton so we have like nostrils here and then the teeth like that 
Uh, I'm not going to go into detail with that. This time I'm going to bring it, and uh, luckily I do have a little extra space here. I'm going to try and bring the neck down a little bit. And then here's where the collarbone would be. Now, as we said, the uh, the actual bone structure, it's not just the muscles, the actual bone structure for the female will not be as uh, prominent. And I'm not going to pretend to know what the reason is for that. Oh, also, we want to put the um, 1, 2, 3, 4, the, uh, the middle line here. That's where the waist should be. I'm not going to pretend to know <coughs> um, exactly, you know, how all this stuff works. I'm not a doctor or anything like that. But uh, I'm not sure if, if the bones just grow that way or if it's because the muscle in the male naturally grows uh, stronger, that it, it changes the shape of the bones. But these differences happen after the uh, the chromosome get it gets into the uh, into the, the the system okay so I'm just drawing the bones here some uh, really boring stuff to talk about too but anyway I'm guessing it's about yay far apart and now with the females their hips get a little bit wider and I'm just gonna start off from the very beginning trying to make this a little bit smaller here and the hips a little bit wider not too wide something along those lines so would we be able to tell that it's a a female skeleton just by looking at it I personally don't know if that's that's doable. I'm sure an expert you know somebody who does like autopsies or something they could probably tell with one look what's the other study is it uh, uh forensics like in the TV show CSI, I believe it's called Forensics. So there's a very rough skeleton here. It'd be like rib cage, and you know the muscles start off around here, and of course she's going to have uh, breasts instead of uh, you know the male chest. So for me, that's good enough start off. I'm not sure if it's very accurate, but it's something to get me going. And I'll just turn that down. I don't need the heads anymore. At least we know we have the approximate height is right with that and the size of the head should be about that size so using that as a uh, just a base go in here and try to sketch us out a female human human why they add the hue in front of the men to make him human this is all linguistic stuff I'm talking about now see now if there's, I can tell just by when I'm drawing it, I just eyeball it. I can see the shoulders should definitely be coming down here, which means I should have originally had the uh, collarbone probably about here. But I'm not going to nitpick because that skeleton base, that, that's all it was there for, was just, you know, as a base. So I'll just draw around here the way that feels comfortable for me now. Though I know actually the shoulder. Uh, the pivot for the shoulder is going to be right about there. That's all we need to know. And so that means the arms would be about here. And we could say the body is coming down right about here. It's be sk real skinny, but it'll still come in a little bit. They have the curves, the natural curves that we have on the body. And then there's going to be a ton of you know, outward curve here for the, uh, you know, the stereotypical... Uh, what would you call it? The violin or the, the glass shaped body of a uh, female. And the, I'm not a breastologist here. I'm, I'm not a breast doctor or anything, but I think one thing y you should know is that um, the, um, the breasts uh, do tend to point outwards. And you can get really scientific about this. Uh, like I was saying in the last video, I don't draw naked people that much. Um, it's important to know. But as I get into drawing with people with clothes, I don't, you know, I, I tend to forget a lot of the details here. But I do know that they'll point outwards naturally. And then um, it would be what you see when a girl is clothed is you usually see a girl who's wearing a bra. And that can change that, that natural shape. But uh, for artistic purposes, I like to try and keep some of that that natural shape so you can see if we were to start here or around probably somewhere around here around where the armpit is it'll swing out nat naturally like this and then from the center of the chest it'll also kind of uh, droop out 
it's kind of a droop I believe would be the perfect word for it and that's that uh, another important thing to remember with uh, arms when the, somebody's standing in resting position is that arms are full of fat and muscle so they have this certain thickness about them and when they're resting they should actually just be resting along the side of the body in, inside here whereas some people they might draw arms standing out like this it looks unnatural for somebody you know to just have their arm out like that but if you want somebody just look like they're standing there which is good for uh, you know if you're designing a new character and you want them to just uh, you know be standing there and look natural without looking like they're like uh, you know too stiff you don't want you don't want a new character to look like they're too stiff standing there like they're terrified or something you want them to look like they're just standing naturally so uh... you know part of that natural standing position is just to have the arm rest against the inside of the body and then you know this arm will come down and since the elbow can also swing on a pivot you know back and forth this way with the uh... with the forearm this one will come in a little bit and just rest along the uh... the side of the body now as we know with the other uh you know such as with the male we have to get into those gross details of the crotch and where the arm should rest exactly where the hand should less or rest maybe something we not all of us want to think about but uh for artistic purposes here we're going to have to uh you know grin and bear it then you have your perverts who probably uh enjoy that thought but uh there's nothing wrong with that it's natural it's art And that should be just about right. I'm thinking from hip to heel here is the knee. I have a strong tendency to put the knee in not exactly the right place. And this, to represent where the knee is, is ending up at, we have to make sure that we get this this curve of this uh, this meat here. This, uh, what would you call it, the, the muscle should come in and have sort of a, a teardrop shape here. And again, you can get so scientific about this stuff. Um, I don't have time in the day for it. That uh, there should be, you know, just just the right amount of um, curve for a female muscle that you can actually distinguish. If you, if you look at a female leg, and you know, obviously, one reason in the Western society, particularly, we can spot a female leg if it's wearing high heel shoes, and uh, you know, traditionally speaking, of course, some guys wear high heel shoes, I guess, for fun. But traditionally speaking, high heel shoes, maybe smooth legs as if they're shaved or something, that would tell us that it's female very quickly. But if you have an expert eye, you could also notice the curve of the muscle will also actually give away the uh, male or female, um, you know, uh, what, what is it, gender, I guess. It, it'll just let you know whether it's male or female and that's uh... i'm not sure if that's a hundred percent accurate but from what i've seen and studied that it seems to be pretty much the case now you see here whereas with the male we did a six pack uh... you can do that with a female too if you want but it's not the uh... you know stereotypical thing of course uh... the girl will be more slender less muscular and uh... you know i don't have to go into detail about that that's just basically just how it is so we definitely have a female form uh, coming into shape here. Legs didn't have to be so fat, but well, they are. So she's a uh, female with fat legs, and that's just how it is. <clears throat> I'm okay with that, how that turned out. I'm going to skip the shade this time, and uh, you know, again, let's review. Same as usual. Started off with the heads here. Let's look back at that original female. Nah, that's no good. Start off with the heads. That gave us the right height to get a sort of a skeleton with rib cage, you know, hips. It's very uh very basic. So it's like a stick figure, but at least we gave it instead of, you know, uh where am I? I don't want to do that. Instead of just doing one of these things, we got we went a little bit more into detail with the shoulders, basically all of the joints in the body. You know, the shoulders, the elbows, and uh all of these spots here and it gets way more complicated when you get into like how the body bends you know when it, when it leans over uh you know running positions this and that and get really complicated the way that you know uh, the body itself can like pivot and swing and all this stuff but uh just for a regular standing position it's pretty good to start with and this 
this one here. Okay, I already added that layer. So now I can go in here with that as a sketch and maybe just get a little bit more refined. This here is, uh, this is the head. We're going to try not to make the jawline so rigid, such as if we were to go like this, I think we would all very quickly agree that, you know, this looks like uh, the outline of a male face, if we're going to go like this, as a strong jaw. Not always. You know, sometimes girls have that kind of jaw too. Um, but stereotypically speaking, as I keep saying, I'm trying to, you know, keep myself from getting into trouble. This, uh, I would do longer eyelashes. You know. So you see instantly this looks a bit more masculine with a stronger chiseled jaw and this looks a bit more feminine. Uh, nose a little skinnier. These are again just very very stereotypical things. Not at all always true. And uh, eyelashes, you know, girls wear makeup so if you really want to get stereotypical throw some makeup on there and uh, you know you can write a book on uh, how to profile people. And of course the long hair to really uh, bury ourselves in the uh, you know to beat the the dead horse of being stereotypical or we'll make the female with long hair. Now you can have if you're going comic book style it would be normal to exaggerate a lot of these features such as uh, the breasts on the female, the muscles, you know the sexuality of the the <laughs> well both genders but particularly the women is like uh, it's funny sometimes in, uh, in comic books how big they make it, the breasts and how uh, you know I don't even know the words for it how just exotic they can make the uh, the shape and the curves of the body. This time the hands falling down here which I'm okay with. I'm just gonna go with it. And this one I'll do with a regular position with the hand coming out a little and the thumbs. It's actually not too natural but it doesn't have to be the same every time. And uh, since we already had the uh, the naked one there, uh, this time I'll add some clothes. I have a rough outline here and just to make some notes like the uh, the belly button uh, kind of comes up as you know where the pants, if she were to be wearing pants it would be right here, the belly button's right there how could we judge that? We would say uh, basically from the crotch area to the top of uh, where the sternum would be which could even be up higher, the top of the abdomen maybe about midway because usually if you had a six pack here you would go one, two and I think the belly, buddy, belly button excuse me would be right there. Don't quote me on that. Look it up yourself. For this time, uh, I'm just gonna you know, leave it at that. And now I'm gonna start putting, I guess just a t-shirt and jeans again is fine. For the girl, it might be stereotypical to have uh, shorter sleeves for the short sleeves. Or is it? I don't know. I'm not sure if I like that look. Maybe just about here. And the neckline. I'm not an expert on female clothing. What I'm trying to do here is uh, just get, I'm trying to think, if she has a t-shirt on it, and this seems to be a very tight t-shirt, but it doesn't have to be. I can loosen this up a little. Then there would be, uh, the shirt might be kind of dangling from, from this area here, so we wouldn't need that sharp line like that. However, there would be, um, you know, maybe sort of stretching along here. The shirt would dangle down a bit a bittle, I don't know where that came from, a bit, something along those lines. <coughs> and the shirt doesn't have to be really strapping to her. Okay. And then, yeah, again with the jeans. I'm not sure if anybody notices, like, you have a zipper. Actually, often with a girl, they don't like to have those long zipper lines. They would have, if they have at all, it'd be a shorter zipper line like that. And the belt would be up here. That. She might have small pockets, not big ones. And so she's wearing very tight jeans, but I want to make them that tight. It's kind of, let me go like this. 
Whereas guys are more, the clothing for a male is usually very stereotypical. You, you can never be too sure it's going to happen with a female. She could have jeans that cut off up here. You know, guys are a lot more uniform and more standard, whereas girls get uh, flamboyant with their with their fashion a lot. And you never know what's going to go on down here. She could be wearing sandals or, or whatever. I might just go ahead and do some toes. I haven't drawn toes in a while. But I'm not going to go into detail with it. Just uh, suggestions. Suggestions of the toes. It would be like some poem or something. I'm going to get real artsy. Why is this dude's face here? Don't need him anymore. Okay. Okay. I'd say that looks like a female. I don't know about you. I like that using the, the smaller pen too. It kind of came out nice like that. And I could easily turn another, turn this into another layer where I went in and uh, you know used like nice fine pen strokes. But we're just sketching. That's what I'm doing now. I'm sketching. I'm not getting into the uh, the nitty gritty with the final art. I will be doing that later. If you happen to be watching this, excuse me, I'm stuttering a lot today. Um, this is going to be the shade layer. I'll put it down here. See if I take that away. Yeah, that's a half decent like silhouette sketch. But I like these gritty lines. I'm going to leave them in there. They give a little bit of uh, shape. And I'm going to use them to help guide my um, my shading here. Shade layer. Turn the opacity down. Is that the right one? Oh, this is the shade layer. Yeah. Turn this up. That's why I should name your layers, but I don't really have time for it right now. <coughs> um, what was I saying? Lighting coming from maybe the left, maybe the right, who knows. The opacity can go lower. So you see here I'm just doing a little uh, kind of symbolic that there's there's some uh, some areas that are kind of like floating down here. So there'd be like a wrinkle. You just imagine like a wave like this coming down. And then the shirt might get tighter at the bottom, so it the uh, that wave kind of tapers off. Uh, we would avoid doing Adam's apples probably for the female. Again, it's stereotypical, but such is life. There's a lot of beautiful girls with Adam's apples. Actually, it doesn't bother me at all. What are you doing staring at people's necks for anyway? Some girls get picked on because they had an Adam's apple. Bit of an Adam's apple. So they get picked on for looking like a boy. I don't think so. And that's about it. And yeah, like I was saying with uh, the future videos, I will be getting into more detailed stuff. This is basically a process of starting off simple and going into more complicated things because that's what I want to do. <coughs> a little bit of shading there. A little cash, cash shadow. Not necessarily necessary, but nice to have sometimes. A little cash shadow. That's about it. I really feel, I don't feel, you know, any need to go into much more detail than that for a sketch. Half decent sketch of a, of a female. Stereotypical characteristics. Uh, it almost looked like her body is getting sucked in right about here, and uh, I went a little overboard with the breasts. What can I do to fix that? Probably take out some of these lines. It's because these uh, black lines were unnecessary, and I saw that coming a mile away. I knew that was going to happen. Yeah, probably like that. Some of that shade might be unnecessary too. Yeah. I'd say it's good enough. And always have a look from the other side. I, you might even be noticing mistakes that I can't see right now because I just got used to it. That's nah, okay. Not too bad. One thing I've, uh, a problem I frequently had would be like the shoulder. <coughs> if I can get this going, the distance from this shoulder to the neck and that shoulder to the neck uh, you know like from here to the center I could frequently do uh, differently if I wasn't paying attention if I'm drawing too fast length of the arms 
uh, symmetry okay like this arm might look a little bit fatter than that one it would be something if I wanted to keep working on this but uh, overall I'd say it's probably not too bad a couple little anatomy flaws here and there yeah I'll just leave that there and uh, so I guess next what we'll do is get into more um, and this is just for me really I mean it's not necessarily tutorials some people might like to watch along I'll do some uh, more dynamic poses get into poses they have a good uh, website quickposes.com I'll probably check that one out so if you want to subscribe and uh, you know I have a lot of other stuff coming up and uh, I'll also be getting into some more colorful things I plan on getting into color and uh, doing some full-fledged uh, you know landscape paintings with scenes and stuff like that and uh, that's it for now see you next time and have a good day